Live from WPRI 12, this is The Road Show, the place for what's hot and happening. You're having fun, eating well, and living life on The Road Show. Good morning and welcome to The Road Show. It is Thursday, March 15, 2012, and I'm Will Gilbert. Good morning, I'm Michaela Johnson. And I'm Mary Larson. It is the Ides of March. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. We also have a special little treat on the table. I don't know if you can see that or not. I'm sure you can. I mean, it's a plate full of cupcakes. <laughs> Who doesn't want to see that? And they look fantastic. They are. They're from Bakery Boutique, who's actually cooking with us today on the show. The ones with the little Italian flags there, those are the Zapoli cupcakes. Okay. And then we have Guinness Stout. Bailey's green velvet mm -hmm. rather than you know typical red velvet and then on the top we have some Zapolis or Zapolis however you want to say it um, baked <coughs> fried and cupcake. cupcake I was talking with Dina this morning she said the uh, the ones with the Guinness she said they are incredible Oh, that's on the top of my list. That's on the top of my list too. We may be we may be wrestling over. There's them. a few. Yeah. There are a few. Yeah. All right. Well, there are a few, and uh, now I have to stare at these all morning long. A few may be missing after the commercial. Trust me, I want to dive on that table and have one right now. <laughs> smaller. Yes. All right. As if we didn't know this, but a new study suggests Rhode Island drivers are among the worst in the country. Yes, no. it's true. This is according to Men's Health magazine. Providence is the sixth most car crash prone city in the U.S. Rhode Island's capital ranked 95th out of 100 cities studied. The ranking took into account a number of factors, including the number of crashes, seatbelt use, and safe driving laws. Seatbelt use? Not mm. Yeah. I, yeah. I have to, if you've ever driven with me, I always say, put your seatbelt on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't care if the little, like, you know, the thing's buzzing at you. you don't, I don't even Just need that. I'm, yes. I'm the little warning yeah. sign. Just throw your seatbelt on. I don't want anything to happen and ever feel like... Well, we've been seeing some of those drivers the oh, past yeah. couple of days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, with the warm weather, I think, I'm not sure if it's the warm weather that brings out the crazier mm -hmm. than usual drivers. It was that solar flare. Yeah, yeah. but the even this morning on the way in, there was a guy weaving in and out of traffic. Even, you mm -hmm. know, if that's what you want to do, fine, but you're going to take somebody else out with you. you yeah, know? oh, the worst is when they cut across, cut across all, all of the lanes in one shot. Yeah. Yeah. Nope, no blinker, Oof. and sometimes they don't even look. Welcome right. to Rhode Island. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. There you All go. right. Well, today the U.S. Department of Agriculture will announce that starting this fall, schools will be able to choose whether or not they buy hamburger that contains lean, finely textured beef known as pink slime. Sounds oh, delicious. Right? Yum. The beef filler is found in 70% of the ground beef sold in supermarkets. It's basically made up of fatty bits from meat left over from other cuts. Mm -hmm. During the processing stage, ugh, <laughs> it's washed with ammonium hydroxide gas to kill any bacteria. This is, uh, there is only one way to know for certain that pink slime is not in your beef, and that's if your meat is stamped with USDA organic. That means it's pure meat with no filler. And while schools will soon have the choice, the USDA does not require that pink slime appear on labels in grocery stores. Wouldn't that be funny if you went to a grocery store and on it did have this pink slime Ugh. sticker smacked on it? No, no thanks. I, flying off the shelves. I'm kidding. That just, uh, bits of other meat yeah, and washed I want, and I want gas. A and, uh, but on the other hand, That's I like, like hot dogs. And isn't that what hot uh, dogs are? Hot, yeah. hot, uh, hot dogs is a lot of other stuff in it. It is. We'd have to go on for three hours about hot dogs. <laughs> no I don't think we want to get into that. <laughs> Pass me a Guinness cupcake. <laughs> <laughs> National X Factor auditions have begun. Contestants lined up in Kansas City, Missouri for their chance to appear on the X Factor. The hit show is returning for a second season on Fox Providence and musicians packed into the uh, Kerpa Arena for a chance to be noticed. This scene is a lot like what we can expect to see here in Providence on May 10th. That's when auditions will take place at the Dunkin' Donut Center. Thousands are expected to show up in Providence is one of only five stops. And don't forget, registration day, very important, is on May 9th. For more information, you can head to WPRI.com. It's going to be very important mm -hmm. that you, of course, register yes. on that day because there are going to be thousands upon thousands, thousands of, people. of people. So if you don't get registered beforehand, I'm, I'm sure they're easily going to turn people oh, away. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly. And certainly. Considering we're only one of five people will be coming from all over the Northeast mm -hmm. and everything else to get to this spot. So make Absolutely. sure if you plan on doing the X Factor. Come early camp out. Yes. yes. Eat in our restaurants, stay in our hotels, and have fun. Yeah, have a cupcake. <laughs> we'll see you have okay. a cupcake. All right, we have a great show coming up. Let's see what's on the way on the road show this morning. Rhode Island singer Erica Van Pelt tries to win a spot in American Idol's top ten. Now our dreams are coming true. Will her performance keep her in the competition? Hear what the judges thought. And in the buzz, he's talented, but wanted by police. You, uh, 
charged, criminally charged. What did you think when this Idol contestant was disqualified? We're talking about it. And in the kitchen, we're joining Dina Cimarelli from the Bakery Boutique, making some seasonal treats for St. Joseph's Day. Learn to bake Zabella cupcakes. Then Irish Spirit on the Roadshow stage. It's all coming up on the Roadshow. Talk about a video going viral. Coney 2012 has been viewed by more than 112 million times in just over a week. But its critics say the video is sending a mixed message to young activists. Susan Hogan joins us now with why the, uh, this video and the group it supports are under fire. Good morning, Susan. Good morning, Will. First, let's, uh, you know, we both have watched this video <laughs> yeah. already. It's about uh, 29 Horrible. minutes, 30 mm -hmm. minutes long. For those who haven't, uh, you know, watched it yet, Let's explain what it's all about. Well, to understand Coney 2012 is to also understand the group that put it out, which is called Invisible Children. Uh -huh. It's a charity. It's a nonprofit group that put out this video to really um, make aware of the atrocities that are being done against children in Africa at the hands of Uganda's Joseph Coney. Right. And I'll tell you, you know, it's really that 20 sect, the college students and, and that age group that just really watched it and has taken it off and really has given this viral, this video a real viral sense. Basically, what's happening here is after you're watching this you know the the group has raised millions of dollars because of this awareness but it also has sparked a lot of questions right yeah and what kind of questions has it you know has it sparked well basically the Better Business Bureau just sent out an alert they have what's called the wise giving alliance it's where people can go and look if they want to donate to a particular charity they can look at this particular thing also charity navigator is another mm -hmm. place too where you can go and see where charities put their money where is that money going that you you know twenty dollars fifty dollars where is that going well for the past six years they have reached out to invisible children 18 times to ask them for some sort of a financial review of their organization not only have they not responded it's just been completely ignored which makes you wonder why yeah and you know I mean I, I know they somebody from the from the organization did respond you know gave a video message but is do you think this is what's holding people back from actually donating money or getting involved because they're so afraid of well, maybe it's not going to the place that they are expecting it to go to. Of course. And this really, this Coney 2012 and Invisible Children, it has sparked. When you, when you don't put forth your financial yeah. information, they don't have to, by the way. Oh, the really? Better Business Bureau, okay. it's completely voluntary. But when thousands of other charities are doing mm -hmm. it and you're not, it does raise questions. It doesn't make the charity a bad charity. It's not saying that they've done something wrong. But it certainly does make you go, huh. Mm. So here's the thing. When, when you know thousands of other charities are putting forth this information and they're not, it does make you kind of question it. The, the CEO, Ben Keasley, did recently have to respond to all of this criticism, not just from the Better Business Sure. Bureau, but from other critics also nationwide. Who had a lot of questions. Worldwide. Right, right. You, know, you know, where is this money going? Mm -hmm. Because I think the, the biggest thing was the expenditures, the business, the travel expenses, th hundreds of thousands of dollars in business and travel expenses, and why? And so he had to, you know, finally go before the, a worldwide audience on YouTube again, just like the Coney 2012 yeah. video, and he's saying listen I'm as transparent as can be sorry about this but you know what he was also saying when you would uh, after the Coney 2012 video aired people would cr you know go onto the website it crashed so it kind of is like, I get it you it looks like I'm a fly-by-night charity because our our website crashed but it's just because we have millions of views but bottom line is here we are here's what here's the transparency this is where our money is going and he broke it down in an eight minute and 33 second video but was that enough to make people feel comfortable satisfied? feel we don't comfortable know that and yet. start to donate yeah right. and, and you know if you haven't watched the video it's disturbing to watch. It is disturbing to watch, and that's the other thing too. Is is that we were talking about this this morning yeah. that Coney has not been in the area for years. So right. what is this? Is this propaganda? What, you know, what is the purpose of this particular video? So you know, it really has sparked a lot of talk. Which you know what? It's exactly what I wanted. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And you right. got it. Thanks, Susan. Thank you. Thanks for all the information. And to watch the Coney 2012 video yourself, you can head to our website wpri.com. A local organization that helps students become leaders and make a difference in our community is preparing for their annual conference. This year's interlead topic is violence against women in high school. And here to talk more about the student leadership training program is instructor Shira Hirschberg along with student conference coordinator Caroline Chenard. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. 
So Shira, let's just start off. Tell us exactly what SLTP is. Sure. So SLTP is an organization that focuses on training students and leadership skills. So we teach things like team building, group process, and communication. And really our mission is to empower student leaders. So we want students to feel like they can go back to their schools and make a difference there. Great. And specifically, what's going to be happening at this summer conference? So this summer we have um, five-day residential conferences, and they're in Nichols College. And students come. We have got five different sessions so it can easily fit into your summer schedule and we teach them all these leadership skills in small groups they really get to learn how to interact with students and work more effectively in groups um, and we really focus on fostering an atmosphere of mutual respect and acceptance so there's no bullying there are no clicks and students really feel like they can be themselves well, it's really needed nowadays I know it's a big topic with students who exactly can attend you know what age range are you looking for so for our summer conferences we have students in seventh through twelfth grade so that's what we look for there and some students are highly involved and some aren't and we really feel like that makes our groups more diverse and more interesting. Yeah, definitely. And these students, you know, as you said, they're going to be from young to old teens. What can they gain from this experience? So um, for our summer conferences, really they get a lot of skills. The, initially, they just love the experience, mm -hmm. you know. When I went, when I was back in a student, um, it was the best week of my life and we hear that from a lot of our students. Um, and really that's because of this atmosphere that we have there. So they really enjoy their time, but they also bring concrete skills. We apply all the things that we teach them to their school, their home, and their community so they can bring it back and make changes there. Oh, it sounds great. So Caroline, tell me a little bit about your experience in the program. Well, I got involved when I was um, going into my sophomore year of high school, and now I'm a freshman in college. So um, I can say that it's influenced me every day since I first went to the summer conference. Um, I Before I went to SLTP, I used to kind of hesitate to jump in and speak up and see something that I thought maybe needed to change. But when I came back after that summer, I really felt like I could make a difference and I had those skills to have the confidence to speak up. And what kind of skills have you been able, you know, did, did you grow and what have you been able to take out of it? Oh, there's so many. Um, I learned a lot about communication and that you need to... Um, really know the message that you're trying to get across, the way to phrase something so that the other person gets the message that you're intending. Um, another thing we focus on is humor. Um, and people might not think that that's a skill that you can learn, but I know Shira and I can kind of attest. We both become a lot funnier, and <laughs> it's true. a way to really bring a group together, and um, it can be a really great tool to um, start forming a new group and make people feel comfortable. And how can people, if they're interested, how can they sign up for this and learn more about it? Uh, we have a website called sltp.info, mm -hmm. um, and there's applications and more information about all our conferences on our website. So our one-day conference information is called the Interlead, and there's information about that. And then our summer conferences, our overnight conferences are on there as well. So all the information is on our website. Well, great. Thank you so much, both Thank of you, you, for coming Thank in. Thank you for having us. It's been a pleasure. For more information on the Student Leadership Training Program, just head to our website, WP. All right, Dina Cimarelli from the Bakery Boutique joins us in the kitchen this morning. I know St. Patrick's Day is right around the corner, but so is St. Joseph's Day. It is. There's two saints back to back. Yes. So we've and a busy few days at the bakery coming up. Staples are always on the menu. For St. Joseph's Day, it's a staple. Okay. You need them. And you need both. You need the baked and the fried. And cupcakes. And you need cupcakes. Well, if you're going to go to the bakery, you definitely need the cupcakes <laughs> Absolutely. There. I'm so a fan what, of the fried. Okay, so what do we need to, to make these cupcakes So today? what we're going to do today is these are the ingredients. We're just going to make a basic vanilla cupcake. So okay. simple ingredients. you got like all-purpose flour, unsalted butter, whole eggs. We have a bourbon vanilla extract, granulated sugar, and whole milk. You said bourbon vanilla? Yeah. How does that differ from just regular vanilla it, it extract? It actually has, a, it, the vanilla is so much more stronger mm -hmm. with the bourbon in it. Just a little bit of the alcohol, it just brings it right out. Because to make a true vanilla ac extract, they actually use rum with vanilla bean. This oh. incorporates, they put a little bit of bourbon into it, and it just really kicks up the vanilla notch. Awesome. Good. I like that. And yes. how about for the, the, the filling or the frosting? What, what would you call this? We, it's filling? A, a Vienna, it's a filling. A filling, But okay. it's a cream. We do a Vienna cream. Yum. Which is like a thick, yellowy, custard cream. Um, your egg yolks, your sugar, mm -hmm. your milk, it's all stuff that's low fat, of course. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and then what we just do is, we're going to show you later on, we just take the vanilla cupcake and we kind of use it as if it is the Zapola shell. 
Okay. So that's where we turn it so to. But we fill it with the cream. We top it with Yum. the cream. We got the maraschino cherry, some powdered sugar. I like it. An All Italian right. flag, and we're good to go. I'm hungry. We got zeppelas in the kitchen. We're going to start making them in just a bit. For now, back to you. This morning in Idle Watch, a dramatic night. With the absence of contestant Jermaine Jones, now disqualified from the competition, producer sat down with Jermaine and revealed that he had four warrants out for his arrest, none of which had been disclosed to producers. But it was a business as usual, and the remaining contestants sang songs from the year they were born. Erica Van Pelt sang her version of Heaven by Brian Adams. Take a look. you're too busy all over it. I gotta be honest, you know, it's a beautiful song. When a song is that pretty, you gotta kind of stay with it, stay with the melody. Um, but I still like your voice. Thank you. <laughs> Here's, uh, you know, I hear what he's saying about the arrangement. That song is such a powerful song, mm -hmm. and you have the chops to really rock that out. You are this year's Janis Joplin, as far as I'm concerned. You have those type of vocals. You can go up, you can go down, you can give us the rasp and the, gr the growl and all that stuff. Um, but the arrangement, you know, kind of got us somewhere in the middle of it and, and left us a little bit kind of wanting more. But here's what I loved about today with you. I see you, and what I love about this journey as well, is seeing you guys kind of your image, shape, and form right in front of us. And mm. I think you look amazing tonight, the best you've looked. And you're just, you do. You do. I feel you. I feel you coming together as an artist. You always had the voice. You have the voice, and the rest of the rest of it is part of it too. And you're just you're just coming together in, in the best way. I think you're great. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> Yo, uh, I kind of liked it. For me, it was like a nice like eight out of ten. Because uh, here's the thing. You got this big voice. I think it was a great song choice for you. Yeah. And Jennifer's right. You look amazing. But the other thing is that just be careful not to try and make too much out of a great classic song like that. Sometimes it's cool just to sing it. It doesn't need, if it ain't broke, why try and fix it with some weird, catchy, jerky arrangement? You know what I mean? Okay, so some mixed reviews there for Erica last night. What did you guys think? I think she's being blamed for an arrangement that she didn't necessarily change. Could be, could so be. Uh, I feel a little bad about that. I think you know it's a, this is one of the toughest things to mm -hmm. sing a song from the year you were born. You yeah. know, it, yeah. you generally have some limited time to pick from. So it's tough. It's tough. It's tough. It is very tough. And I think it, she has a powerful voice, but now it, it does make me kind of nervous for her, only because yeah. I know so many people that watch this show listen so heavily to what the judges say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the fact that Jennifer Lopez and Steven Tyler were kind of iffy about this arrangement, I, I don't know. I hope for the best, of course, as always, for Erica, but it's going to be interesting to see. I know she was on the, in the bottom last week. Yeah. So. We, you know, we've told you each, uh, you know, each week to make sure that you do vote for yes. Erica. This could be, you know, a real tough time for her, you know, this, yeah. this, uh, this coming week, and we'll find out tonight. And you hope that, you know, she obviously doesn't get eliminated and continues mm -hmm. on, not only because we want her to win, but also we want her to get into the top ten. Everybody knows when you get into the top ten, mm -hmm. you we get to go on the tour. The tour. Um, I mean, there's no doubt in anybody's mind that Erica can sing. She yes, has the right. talent. She does, like the judges were saying last night. She looks great. Mm -hmm. So these are all factors that, uh, you know, so pick up the phone time. Start dialing. Dial away. And Dial I know away. there weren't, I mean, she wasn't maybe one of the definite standouts. Some people that did stand out for me, um, I know in particular, Philip Phillips. <laughs> I mean, come on. I, 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 I adore Philip Phillips. He had his kidney surgery. Yeah, he's not feeling good, yeah. The, uh, on Thursday or something like that. He had it very fairly recently. Um, and he came out and he 
performed like a champ. I mm -hmm. thought he still sounded so great. And Joshua, I know, the week before his, his prior song, I wasn't too big of a fan of, but no. this year, boy, did he knock it out he of the He really did. He could really sing. When, I mean, when a man loves a woman, I, I love that song. So especially when you do well on a yes. classic, on a hit, you got to love it. And then last night, Jennifer Lopez tells him that it was the best ever mm -hmm. on American Idol. I mean, that's got to do something for your, you know, for your ego. <laughs> so who are we thinking? You know, and then last but not least, Holly. Let's check out uh, what Holly, yeah. how Holly was. Girl can sing. She really can yes. sing. She's oh a little tiny gosh. thing, but she can belt it up. All right. And then remember yesterday we introduced you to Lewis. His dream was to go see American Idol. Well, his wish did come true. Let's take a look at some of the pictures from last night. This is Lewis meeting his favorite, of oh, course, gosh. Erica Van Pelt. Very cool. Mm. This next one is Lewis with a group of idols. It looks like he was able to go backstage and meet all of them. I think that's his parents, too, yeah. in the photo as well. And this lax picture looks like some of the contestants were having a little fun with Lewis. <laughs> looks like he had a really great time. We're so happy that his uh, wish did come true. Yeah, that's great. And good luck to Erica. We find out tonight who goes home. Make sure to vote. Catch Idol on our sister station, Fox Providence. Still to come this morning on the road show, award season may be over, but fashion never stops, and the fashion police are on duty. Joan Rivers and daughter Melissa join us next, live. Plus. We're gearing up for St. Patrick's Day with some Irish music. You're watching the road show, and we're back in 90 seconds. You know her for her sharp-tongued comedy, and Joan Rivers has turned her wit into a weekly event on E's Fashion Police. And as the show now expands to one whole hour, she and daughter Melissa Rivers, who is the executive producer of the show, join us live this morning on The Road Show. Good morning to you both. Good morning. <laughs> In unison. I like what that. Is what? <laughs> now, Melissa, as executive producer of the show, why did you excite, decide to expand this for one whole hour? Uh, the demand was there. You know, people, it's done knock on wood, it's a hit show. And the comments we were getting was, you know, a half hour isn't enough be between the fashion and the commentary and the comedy and the, the segments. Se they the, love the, the segments. The branded segments, people wanted more. And we found we were having to cut so much each week that the feeling was there is a there is an hour show there and, and two weeks in knock on wood it's been great I mean well we have sh things like uh, guess me from behind and rack report and uh, <laughs> bitch stole my look <laughs> America needs more of this. more they want more they want more more of the craziness absolutely some of my favorite segments of course and because there's such a demand are there new segments that we can look forward to of, we're always coming up with new segments. You know, we're, it, it's also giving us an opportunity, which is great, to use fashion as a jump, jumping off point for more comedy and more discussion about things that are trending in the news and things that are trending with celebrities because there is so much. So we'll talk about someone's dress and have the opportunity now to move into, you know, like this whole Rihanna, uh, Chris Brown, Chris Brown mm -hmm. with the new girlfriend battle, which was a lot of gossip. A lot of gossip going wow. on there too. That's fantastic. Now, I, Joan, you are hysterical. I mean, I think some of your comments are definitely some of the best. And especially with those who are the worst fashion offenders, and who just seems to keep popping up over and over again? Oh, it, it, it varies. Katy Perry for a while was <laughs> wonderful, but now she's coming in for the cold. She listens to us. Courtney, <laughs> Courtney Love is a, a gift, gift from God. Yeah, a gift that keeps on giving. Uh, Helena Bonham Carter, they're a whole bunch. And uh, a lot of hits and misses uh, at the Academy Awards. Uh, Gwyneth Paltrow was all in white. I thought I was dead and she was beckoning. You know? <laughs> 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 oh my gosh! And now the, the pictures—it's so that much fun to do. <laughs> I bet. Now the pictures that you do show—do you hand select those yourself? Of course, they're hand selected. We go through many, 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 many pictures every week. Literally, as soon as the show is done for one week, we start looking for pictures for the next week. We have a wonderful staff and everybody's always looking and our other hosts and are always out and about and, and calling. calling and saying, oh my God, make sure you get a picture of so-and-so. I just saw them and there's definitely a paparazzi photo. So, and everybody's everywhere and our Joan Rangers, bless their little hearts, are out there now on patrol also. Doing their research. I like that. All right, well, we look forward to, to new segments from both of you and thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget, you can catch Fashion Police Friday nights on E. 
St. Patrick's Day is upon us, and we're in the mood for wee little Irish music here on the road show. Radio listeners might be familiar with Celtic Sojourn, which returns to the stage in New Bedford Saturday night. Matt Poisett's Mark Roberts will be performing at the show along with a number of other musicians, and he joins us this morning. Good morning, Mark. Good morning. So tell me a little bit about the show you're going to be doing at the Zyterian Theater in New Bedford. Uh, the Zyterian uh, Celtic Sojourn show, it's, uh, there's a lot of different performers, there's uh, singers, there's some great dancers, mm -hmm. Karen Jordan and her dancers are going to be there. Nice. And I'm going to be playing with a fiddler, Tina Leck, who's from Providence and lives in Boston now, and Joey Abarta is an Irish bagpiper, and we're going to play for the dancers. You've got the whole crew, and yes. you also have an Irish flute. Now, I this is different than other flutes that people traditionally see. Tell me about it a little bit. Yeah, this is a wooden flute, mm -hmm. and it's a, it's an Irish flute or a simple system flute, and uh, it has all open holes, which is great for playing uh, this kind of traditional music on. All right, and is the tone different at all from other flutes? It's a li I think it's a kind of a softer tone because it's made out of wood. And, oh, nice. uh, so it's, um, it's similar to a silver flute. It's an older style flute. All right, well, let's take a listen to this Irish flute. Take it away for us. Okay, great. It's a toe tap in tune. Yep. Well, you can see Mark and all of the musicians from Celtic Sojourn Saturday night at the Zyterian Theater in New Bedford. For ticket information, just log into our website at WPRI.com. Still to come this morning on the Road Show, we'll be back in the kitchen with the bakery boutique making Zapala cupcakes. Find the recipe now at WPRI.com. Plus, an idol sent packing, but it wasn't his singing that got him kicked off the show. We'll talk about Jermaine Jones' dramatic exit from the competition. That's next in The Buzz. You're watching The Road Show on WPRI 12. You've put us in a very delicate position, really. Um, you know, I apologize, uh, uh, we have to let you go, I'm afraid. I'm sorry, it's the end of the road. Morning in the buzz. Jermaine Jones officially kicked off American Idol. Producers let Jermaine go last night after they discovered he has four warrants out for his arrest, none of which they knew about. Producers say they became particularly worried when they found out Jermaine had used false names with police. Our friends at TMZ talked to the producers of Idol who told them that many of the kids uh, appear on the show are entangled in legal situations, but as long as they are honest about it, they help to clear it up and get the situation taken care of. They went on to say if Jermaine would have been honest, the same would have been true for him as well. Other Idol contestants are surprised by what happened because they had no idea what was going on. Take a look. 
um, it was one of those things that, you know, they just sort of all pulled us into a room together and, um, and let us know yesterday. Obviously, we were sort of sworn to secrecy. We knew something was up because he wasn't around, but we just didn't know what it was. And then once we seen it on television, we were all devastated and we're like, oh my gosh. I really wish we could have said goodbye to him because he was all of our, one of our closest friends and we've all grown so close together and it was really surprising and really upsetting to see somebody leave like that. So the big question is, uh, do you think he, uh, you know, they did the right thing by, by letting him go? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I think they did the right thing and the wrong thing. Here's why. I think they did the right thing in letting him go because not only do you have one warrant, you mm -hmm. have four warrants. Yeah. You lied to the police. Did you not think that they were going to somehow dig that up? I uh -huh. mean, there have been people in Idle Pass who have gotten in trouble for mm -hmm. other things. I think even, you know, smaller offenses, yeah, smaller offenses for yeah. that matter. So just come out and say it. I think they did the, the wrong thing, though, with the package that they put together. How they did it, it was this, oh, this sad goodbye to this great singer. And all I could think of was, are you kidding me? Yes. Does he have a great voice? Of course. Mm -hmm. But he lied to the police, and he has warrants out for his arrest. Goodbye. Yeah. Yep. I, I also think they did the, you know, did the right thing. I mean, I'm sure it was clearly marked on the, you know, the application when they fill it out. You know, do you have any <laughs> warrants out for your arrest? Do you have any trouble that you may want to let us know about? Mm -hmm. You know, one, one warrant, you can say, well, maybe I forget about it. Right. <laughs> but four, I don't think there's any chance that you're forgetting about four arrest warrants. And then the whole changing the name thing and even more, you know, we were talking about this this morning, uh, the whole, you know, lie about his father mm -hmm. that, he, that he made up, you know, Oof. just to maybe get some uh, sympathy votes mm -hmm. also was another reason to to get them off the show. I'm actually really surprised that it's taken this long mm -hmm. for them to find out about That's this. True. You think about people from his hometown who might have known about it. I mean, honestly, four, four warrants. You would have thought someone would have said, hey, when you have your top 25, you know, this guy you might want to take a better look at. That's mm -hmm. That surprised me. Well, what do you think is going to happen now? You know, they've obviously, they usually kick off a contestant, yeah. one, one contestant every week. Now they've kind of done that, but do you think they're going to continue with that tonight? Well, you know, there, I was reading this morning there's a lot of speculation about because he is gone that the judges may have another save mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that they may be able to use uh, you know tonight because they were saying some of these contestants could be in jeopardy uh, the could Ooh, yes. could so, yeah. be the save that they may want to use. <laughs> mm -hmm. And if not, you know, maybe they'll hold on to it. If maybe. they don't use the save tonight, they they always surprise us. So mm -hmm. if it's not tonight, they may do it, you know, in a couple of weeks when they really want to. But I bet you it's going to be based upon the judge's decision. I bet you they're going to figure it out right now, yeah. see who America mm -hmm. voted, and if they want to keep them, they'll do that little switcheroo. Right. And I don't even know if there will be a save. Maybe they just say, hey, it's no elimination yeah. this yeah, we're week. Done. Or maybe they're just going to keep trucking. We'll see. Sorry, see what two happens. people are gone. <laughs> so it is. It's been quite a buzz, and I posted up on Facebook to see what everyone was thinking there. And Eric DeAngelis weighed in. He said he definitely should not continue on the show. Mm -hmm. This was an example of a young man who was probably trying to turn his life around, and the show totally exploited him by airing the confrontation between Jermaine and the producers. This should have happened in private with no cameras, yeah, and all true. they did was sensationalize his criminal record for ratings. That's interesting. Jen Clark Curry says it seems Jermaine knew he would not advance if he told the truth. He lied and was disqualified anyway, so good job, American Idol. The truth will always win in the end. And Lori Arlen says, yes, how dumb was he for going on a national TV with four outstanding warrants? <laughs> a criminal as the next American Idol? I think they handled it just fine. <laughs> You two can weigh in by voting in today's poll. Do you think Idol producers made the right decision? Yes, he shouldn't be allowed to compete, or no, it should be based on singing ability. Well, here's a look at some other topics that are trending online today. Today is otherwise known as the Ides of March. Supposedly, Caesar had been warned that he would be harmed no later than the Ides of March. The prediction came true. On March 15th in 44 BC, Julius Caesar was killed in the Roman Senate. The Ides was traditionally a term to note the 15th day of the months of March, May, July, and October. But to me, it's all Greek to me. Springtime means outdoor track season and also the beginning of frisbee season. But what happens when you combine the two together? Check out this pole vaulter at Birmingham Southern College. He catches the frisbee as he's falling to the ground. Pretty cool. Taking a ride on the Laplange Olympic bobsled track is completely voluntary, but travelers should keep in mind that this isn't your average slide. This poor gentleman doesn't seem to enjoy his time. He screams from start to finish and is in complete terror. Check out this viral video.
<laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> As always, I'll be posting these videos up on our Facebook and Twitter feeds. You can find them at the addresses below, right there. And I'll be back at the end of the show with your poll results. For now, back to the kitchen, Will. Thanks, Mary. We are back in the Roadshow Kitchen this morning. Dina Cimarelli, Bakery Boutique. We are making Zapola cupcakes. We are. This lady's got a spatula in her hand. I'm she ready means to go. she means business. This is business <laughs> she today. She means business. She's not fooling around. So we're going to start off with making the actual vanilla cupcakes. So we started with one cup of unsalted butter. Okay. And it needs to be really softened because if not, it's going to help the uh, mixer get it. Get yeah, it blended, it's right? going to get all chunky and it's not going to be good at all. Be good. And every time you start off baking, like baking 101, you always cream the butter and the sugar first. Okay. Okay. And when you put these two together, the sugar's not as grainy. So what does that smooth it? It'll smooth it out? Yeah, it kind of turns it into like a paste, if you will. Right. So everything right now is going to get incorporated. You should probably mix this for about, I don't know, two to three minutes. Because see how it's still a little crumbly? Right, it's still a little crumbly. You kind of want it all to pull together. Okay, almost like a paste. Exactly. So, yeah, I'm you're doing good? You you're painting, you? you're taking, I'm going to ask you later. You I'm, know that, well, right? I don't I'm going to quiz you. <laughs> <laughs> so... Anytime you add anything else, we want to lower it so there's no... Does it splatter back yeah. up on you? Glad you pointed that out because I would have dropped it in, not slowed it down. That could have been funny though, <laughs> especially if it was flour. Yeah, all over me. Next week we have like so four eggs. Four eggs. Four and eggs. anytime you add eggs into the mixture, you do want to do them one at a time. Because right. you do, they always tell you to fully incorporate the eggs. I know I did too, but in terms of timing... <laughs> but if you're doing this at home... Yeah, if you're doing one this at egg. home, one egg at a time. <laughs> Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> so I'm going to put two more in just to keep it, you know, part, continuity. <laughs> so but that's going to blend for a little while? Those are going to blend. And then what I did was you need a cup of whole milk and then you have a tablespoon of vanilla extract. Okay. I like to mix them together and just let to them get the sit flavor, for a little bit. So the I like the whole vanilla milk right. thing. And then this is pretty much what you want it to look like. It's going to be nice and soft. Yep. And then the last part of it is just our all-purpose flour. And then I alternate. I put in half of the flour with some of the wet milk. And just then to I make do sure the that it gets it. blended yep, right. Yep. Mm -hmm. But sometimes if you put in too much at the same at once, there is this clumps at the bottom. So and it I doesn't mix right. And it doesn't mix and it doesn't right. Mix right. And we don't want that. No, to we don't want that. We want this we perfect. Want, we want our cupcakes to come I out just right. Because I want them to look just like you made them yeah. this morning <laughs> for us. <laughs> they will, I promise. All right. Okay, so we are mixing our ingredients. We got the blender going. It's going. We're gonna make our cupcakes. Mixer. And mixer. Uh, well, oh We're God. mixing. You know, <laughs> um, I'm done. This is why I don't cook. <laughs> we'll be back in just a bit. In the meantime, back to you. It's bake, Will. All right, still to come this morning on the road show, a funny movie with a message. We'll take a look at a thousand words in movies with Michaela. Plus, prepare to plan your weekend. We have lots of local events coming up in Hot Happenings. You're watching The Road Show. We're back in just 90 seconds. Each week we're taking you to the movies to check out what's hot in theaters and get feedback from the audience. In today's Movies with Michaela, funny man Eddie Murphy gives new meaning to making every word count. Check out A Thousand Words. Jack McCall likes to stretch the truth in order to get his way. Hello? She's in labor? Go ahead, go ahead. Hey. Stretch your clock. Come on. Come on. I got a baby on the way. Thank you so much. A lot. Twins? It's twins. It's on the house? Oh. Thank you so much. After lying to a potential client, Jack, played by Eddie Murphy, is in trouble. You and this tree are now connected. But this is no ordinary tree. Hello? Whoa! Can you talk all the leaves fall off the tree? I want my baby back, baby back, baby back. I want my baby back, baby back, ribs. What happens when a tree loses all its leaves? I could die! Jack McCall goes from all talk to all charades. Minty, triple shot latte. <laughs> Iced latte. <laughs> Extra milk. Now with just 1,000 words left, he must choose carefully. You want me to do all the talking? Just do what you would do? I'm gonna need y'all quit playing with me and pull out your big guns. I'm Aaron Weisberger. You better recognize, son. Oh, what do you say we make a deal? Hello, Jack. Yeah. With his career, family, and life all at stake, this selfish man must change his ways. And while the many previews for this film are comical, the story also contains a meaningful message. Keep in mind how you treat your loved ones, your co-workers, or even the people standing in line with you when you get your morning coffee. He must sacrifice a lot to try and win back those he's losing in his life. He also doesn't play about eight characters, so this is a good one for you. Don't forget, we want you to come to the movies with us and provide feedback. Our next movie will be Tuesday night, and we'll post the details up on our Facebook and Twitter. Will? 
Still to come this morning on the road show, we're back in the kitchen this morning, and don't forget, you can cook along with us in the kitchen. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Yay. Okay. And cook along with us. Head to our website, WPRI.com. Thanks. Nice. We are back in the Roadshow kitchen this morning. Tim is being so early. It's here from the Bakery Boutique making Zapola cupcakes. We are. Nice, we are. nice cupcakes. Thanks. <laughs> I've been told that before. Nice. And we also have hey, a, special hey, guest, hey, hey. A, spe a special guest this morning, the chef from the Muppets is joining us. Borshka, 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 borshka. Hello. All right, what do we got going on? So we're going to start with decorating the Zapola cupcake. Now, again, this is just at the bakery. We do a spin of a traditional Zapola, mm -hmm. but we, mm -hmm. we compensate instead of having a Zapola shell, we use a vanilla cupcake. So, Why not? the way we do it is we just core out the center. What are you using? This Special is just cora? an apple cora. Oh, it's, it's an just, apple yeah, cora. It's okay. something you can get in any local grocery store. So maybe you even already have it at home. You could. And you just want to make sure when you do something like this, you don't want to press down all the way because then if you take out the bottom, cake at the bottom, it's, it's going to come right out. You're going to, it's, you know, it's a technique. You get used to it right. and you kind of know when to stop. We'll right. see about that. Do you, <laughs> do you think you could handle <laughs> this? I'm going to give it a shot. You have, you have zero well, faith in me doing this. Oh, God. Oh, okay. I'm sorry that I'm a I know, but I won't let you fall. Frost, though, because lefties frost in the opposite direction, and that oh, that's what right. we do. How does that? Is that right, okay? That's good. And Not then, great, but good. What we, <laughs> what we normally do is just like the zapola is filled in the middle. Mm -hmm. We fill the, the center with the pastry cream, and we use an Italian Vienna cream at the bakery, which is really yummy. just your standard custard. It's lots of egg yolks and mm -hmm. yummy, A lot of good stuff. cream and milk yeah. and sugar. And I do. We just fill the center. Right, just mm -hmm. a little bit, and then Simple we also enough. too just put a little bit on top. I mean, this we can decorate it. Good. Is we there is that. there a knack for frosting a, cu a cupcake the right way? Oh, see, oh, you can do yeah, you can styles. do two. You can do whatever you want. Whatever that knack is, I I've been told think, I don't have it. I think you frosted cupcakes before, actually in our bakery. Uh, so I did. Oh, that's you right. You had a contest oh, with no. you know, the NGB himself. Go ahead, there, ready. Oh. So there you go. <laughs> Here we go. And then, well, see. Say hi. Is there a technique to this? Mm -hmm. All right, now I want you to fill one, one, and I want you to do it as a lefty. All right, How's here that we go, go lefty. Okay, looking right. good so far? Yeah. Okay. Now can you can do a swirl. Oh! Not bad. Oh, hey. 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 I think you need one of these. I do need it. So then, same way, when we top off the zapola, mm -hmm. we put a cherry on top. We put in a little Italian flag because it's because San Gennaro, St. Joseph's Day, and then we just that. dust it because powdered sugar oh, makes oh. everything look better. It does. Look at that cupcake. Yum, right? That's perfect. That then is perfect. We also have at the bakery baked and fried zapolas. All right. Yum. So one is good for bikini season and one not so much, <laughs> I guess, if you want to look at it that way. <laughs> you know what? Well, <laughs> Anytime should be bikini yeah. season no, for no, you. No, no, it's not. You should, season. you should do it. But if you're gonna do this, you know it's once a year. Just go, do it right, go for right. it. You know, go for it. Yeah. Take one of each. We just cut them in half, and again, you're just gonna fill it. Mm -hmm. Oh, you oh I, put some cream okay. in there. Right, so right. yeah, go I'll around, just follow the shell. Bag. Like that. Perfect. Nice and steady. Nice See? technique. Great technique. If I had a card, I'd be holding up the ten. <laughs> See, great. So now we just top it. Mm -hmm. Now do it again. Put some more on top. On the top. Yeah. Mine is not going down. Because if you're going to do it, you're just going to keep going. <laughs> I thought doing you were it. the professional. <laughs> professional what? <laughs> and then again, wherever the, the disconnect is, wherever you end off frosting, I kind of just put the cherry right there. That's the spot. That's the spot. Yeah, and again, same thing. My little flag. So we what go. we're saying is if this little TV thing doesn't work out for me, maybe I can come over. You can to definitely <laughs> come to the bakery. At least once a year to decorate. Yeah. Once a year would be just enough. Yeah. All right. Do I put it on this Let's side too? The or no, so now you do the same thing. You close it. Okay. And then put it on top like that. And that's just a round tip. It's a little bit different where that was a star tip. I was going to say mine was looking a little better. Yes. <laughs> we're going to put Open this. wide, Will. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh my god, I want to 
I want to dust them with sugar. Go ahead. <laughs> We're having fun in the kitchen. <laughs> and dust it. The health board's going to be all And you have all of these on, do you have these all weekend? Are you we having have them? them? Yeah, no, actually, starting today, we're going to have the Zapolas and the Zapola cupcakes every day. But then also, we brought some cupcakes because we have St. Patrick's Day oh, before yeah. St. Joseph's Day. Right. So in the shop, Stock you'll get up. green velvet, you'll get our Guinness Stout cupcake and our Bailey's Irish Cream cupcake, as well as the Zapola cupcake, too. Wow. We normally are closed on Monday, but because Monday St. Joseph's Day, we are going to be open. Oh, okay. Nice. Because, you know, we've got to make everything Are you happen. doing pre-orders before or just come in and get them? I mean, what we always suggest pre-orders. Anytime okay. you're ordering anything that's larger than a do like two dozen, mm -hmm. two dozen zapos, two dozen cupcakes, we do suggest that you call in your orders. And, and they go make fast. Sure you get it. And they too. go fast. Right. Yeah. So we have a lot of people that call up, you know, can we have six, seven dozen? Where they pick them up, they bring them to the office, right, and they right. hand them out on St. Joseph's sure. Day. But now people are getting used to our St. Patty's Day cupcakes, and they're kind of doing the same. So yeah. I know there's two holidays back to back. It's a lot of sweets, but again, it's I don't hate it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's not a uh, bad thing. Would it be okay if I had one of the uh, Guinness cupcakes? It w I, I think you should. I know you said that was your favorite. So I know. I'm standing and here and I'm, you, you know, know what? You have to. Yeah, I gotta give this a shot. You're gonna have right. to. Too? You give that a whirl. I'll give this a whirl. Don't forget, you can find all of our recipes online at so WPRI.com. And make sure you stock up. So good. A lot of holidays coming up. Yes, happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Joseph's Day. You too. Do you love it? I do. We do. do. <laughs> <laughs> this week in Hot Happenings, from Shaka Khan rocking the stage to car giveaways, Megan McGinnis from Twin River is joining us now to give us all the details on what's happening. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Let's talk about Shaka Khan and the world premiere band. They're going to be at Twin River tomorrow night, correct? That's right, Mary. It's a fun night. If you like to dance, there's no better place to be than Twin River. In the event center, we have Shaka Khan here live putting on a great concert. Tickets start at only $35, and there's a few left. So if you still want to go, you have a chance to. You can get tickets here at our box office or maybe on the night of the show if there's still some left. And then also on Friday night is World Premiere Band, which is a Lighthouse favorite. They're performing a free show at the Lighthouse Bar at 8.30, and they always have everyone dancing. So you can dance in a lot of places. If you're a dancer, you want to come out out and be here tomorrow night. Sounds like my place to be. Well, Twin River is also giving away 20 cars. Tell us more. They are. We actually have been earning entries all, if you use your rewards card, you can earn entries all month long, but this weekend actually starts the giveaways, where we're going to give away eight of the 20 cars this weekend. So you want to be here Saturday from 6 to 9 p.m., and then on Sunday from 2 to 5 p.m., where every hour we're going to draw a winner for a brand new car. So that's eight of the 20 cars that we give away this weekend, and then the remaining cars we'll give away next weekend. So you're going to want to be here Friday to dance. You could be driving away in a car as well, Saturday and Sunday. So it should be a great weekend. <laughs> it does sound like a great weekend. Thanks so much, Megan. Thanks, Mary. You can find out more details about the hot happenings from Megan and Twin River on our website, WPRI.com. Coming up on The Road Show, we'll reveal the answer to today's web poll. Stay with us. We're going to take a look to see what you thought of today's web poll because Jermaine Jones, of course, was dismissed from American Idol and not because of viewer votes. So do you think the Idol producers made the right decision? 83% say yes, he shouldn't be allowed to compete, whereas 16% say no, it should be based on singing ability. Back over to you. Thanks, Mary. Coming up tomorrow on The Road Show, it will be a lucky morning as we gear up for St. Patrick's Day. Michaela visits a local brewery who is making some hometown ale for all of the parade goers. Plus a traditional Irish, Irish dancing performance from some very talented girls at the Kelly School of Irish Dance. It was the Guinness, Guinness Cupcake. cupcake. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks goodness. for joining us today on The Road Show. I'm wiping the frosting off. For more information on anything you've seen here on the show, just head to our website, WPRI.com. We'll see you back here tomorrow morning. Have a great day.